Hello all, welcome back to Learning Partner. If you are new, please do subscribe. This is another channel where you can directly connect with me. We have around 1000 plus members already who are working. We take live coding sessions and everything so to just get notified about those sessions. Please do join this group and check out this website also where you can find so many project ideas with live version, proper flow, diagram and APIs and documentation and all. So let's start with the video. So in this video, we are going to start API call integration. So till now, like basic things, whatever, like uh, doesn't matter if it is a React or Angular or Vue.js, basic things like hide and show, how do we add a class? How do we add a dynamic class, dynamic style? How we hide and show? These things are done. Now in every web application, the main part, what we do is make the API call because what the data we get or whenever we have to store some data that we do by using API. So that we are going to discuss. So when we talk about React.js, in React.js, normally we work with JavaScript. So either we can make use of fetch API to make API call, or we can use Axios also. So first I'm going to explain Axios, then we will just simply see the fetch also. Now I have created a component that is gate API. So the route and everything I have created. So in last episode, we have created routes also. So with the help of that only, I have done that. Now I have two APIs. So first API is this one, JSON placeholder API. So this is a free API, mock API. Then second, this will be uh, another API. This is the Swagger where you can find multiple API project. So this API we will be using. Okay. Now in this particular episode, we are just going to discuss on the gate API. So first thing you need to install the package. Okay. Let me just, sorry, let me just open the proper project. npm start so we have to install the exos library exos is the exos library is not of the react it is an external library which we can make use to do the async programming so api call is normally an async way so we do that so this is the command to install it so let's copy it we just have to go over here I have opened a new terminal, enter it. So it will install Axios. Once it install, it will add an entry to the package.json also. Let me just show you that also. So over here you can see whatever the latest version 1.7.3 that we all installed. Once you install the Axios, then in the component, wherever you have to make the API call, there you can directly write the code. We are just going to going through very basic. Okay. There are very uh, scenarios also where we can uh, moderate our API call code into, we can create a separate service and in all that. But for now in the component only, we are going to make the API call. Fine. Now, so this is our component. So what we have to do is let's, uh, we will create a state first. So constant, let's say first JSON placeholder API we are going to make this API call we are going to make. So if you see, if I'm making this API call, I'm going to get the data, right? This type of data we are going to get. It is an array and array of object. So this API call we are going to make. So over here, user list, just a state I'm creating, set user list, because whatever the API call data we are going to get that we need to store it also. So use state and it will be, we are initializing with MTRA. Fine. Now we need to create a function. So constant get users. Fine. So this is the normal arrow function. Now in this arrow function, we have to make the API call. So how do we write that? So again, creating a local variable constant API response is equal to axois. You can see it is automatically suggesting axois dot get. So when we talk about API, we have get, post, put, delete, and patch is also there. So currently we are just discussing about get API. For get API function, we just need to pass only one mandatory parameter that is URL. You can see only one mandatory parameter and that too in the string format. So let's get the URL. This is the URL. 
we are going to face one problem but without that also i just wanted to show you like how you will face it so this is the function symbol function api call function and once we get the data we will get whole api response over here and that response we need to store into this state so set user list and we will get the data in result dot let's see first how do we get and what do we get let's add a debugger over here and this function we will call on a button click so let's add a button first sorry class name btn btn normally we do this on the page load right but we haven't seen st uh, use use effect so that's why i'm uh, doing this on the button click so get users and on this button click we are going to call that api call function so this function i will call it over here let's save and check i think some class is btn btn success okay now just pay attention on the network call and here you can just turn on the fetch xhr fine so now once i click on the gate users you can see in the network we can see one entry okay and in the sources you can see we have got the debugger over here and here currently it is just a promise object we are able to see so we can we have to wait because api call is like once we make the api call it is going to take some time once and then a response will come so we have to wait on this line unless we get the response so that's why we have to make this function a sync so a sync and here on this particular line we have to await fine now if we save now you can change how it is behaving now if i click on get users now here you can see why it's not visible So now here you can see in API response, we have got the complete object, config, data, header, request, status, and status text. So inside that, you can see the data. And inside that data, you are going to get the response, whatever that API has sent. So to save, so API response dot data you need to use. So over here, API response dot data. And I will print this also in ULLI. Let's create a div call structure, class name, row, div, class name, call for. And here I will just showcase the data in ULLI by using map operator. UL, iterate, user list dot map, round bracket, item. return round bracket inside that li and here we will print now in item we are going to get the object so item dot let's print name in the response we got the name so let's save and check now user list dot map is not a function why it is saying like that user list it's an array, so we can use map operator, correct? Let's continue. Yeah. So now if I click on get users, we will get the data and that we are storing into the state. Once we continue, you can see in the ULLI, we are getting the data. So this is how we have done the API call. And all the API call you will be able to see in the network tab in the, just turn on this page etc. You will be able to see all the api calls so this is the api call incoming outgoing detail and we have got the response over here and in the preview also you can see the same response just in the proper format now this was one api which was free now we will try with my api because both the api has different kind of response so you should be aware like how you deal with the different type of api responses so from my swagger, let's say any one API we will try. Let's say this user only. So this is a swagger. If you are not familiar, just Google any YouTube video. You will get an basic understanding of, of what is swagger. 
So you have to click on try it out and execute. You will get the data and everything. So this is the URL. So if I copy this and if I paste it in another, so you can see I'm getting something else later. Now, if you check the response, so this API response, JSON plus older API response is directly array. But in case of my, we are getting object and inside that object in the data, we are getting, getting the actual data, getting it. So it's based on the API, like how API person is returning the data. So baseline, baseline uh, based on that, you need to modify your code. So let's try this also. Now I will create one more button. Let's add this button inside this call for. Let's create call for again. Get users two. Now, just like this function, I will create one more function. So constant get user list. The function name I'm giving, it is going to be an async function. Constant response, just a local variable name. You can give anything is equal to a uh, wait. We have to wait dot gate. Now we just need to pass the new URL. So, and if someone has the question like who will be providing the URL. So once you are, when you are working in the project, my API team will be there. They will be providing you the API, which API you need to integrate where you will get it. So just like this state, I will create one more state, constant state, user data, set user data. Let's initialize the state with empty array like this. Fine. Now, whatever the data we are going to get that we need to store it over here, set user data. Now, so result means uh, response, dot data here we will get the complete object but inside that again we have the object so result dot data dot data i will add the debugger and showcase this also and this function we have to call on another button over here and the api instead of user list we have to make use of user data state so let's do that now let's just test it Let's reload. Now, if I click on get user two, so here you can see in response, why well, not on getting, let me just move one step ahead. Just a minute, I think it hangs. So here you can see in the data, data will have whatever the response API has sent. So here you can see we have got the object. So data dot data, that's what I said. So that's why we have user response dot data dot data. Then you will have the array and that we are storing. And that again, we are using on the ULLI, but name property is not there in my response. What is the username we have? So let's print username. In that API name property was there. That's why it printed, but I, in my API, I don't have it. Now here you can see we have got username. So this is just a simple example, how we make the API call. So I will create four episodes get api post api put api and the delete then i will create a complete crud application so you will have a basic understanding how api crud operation works fine now i will be starting in hindi so api call ab koi bhi web application ka sabse important part hota hai web api integration kyunki hame jo bhi data milta hai ya fir jo bhi data hame save karna obviously hame api database mein store karna hai but database mein connectivity kahan se hongi api ke through so API call करने के लिए in React there are two ways either using Axios library or using Fetch API मतलब JavaScript में directly है so सबसे पहले मैं Axios बता रहा हूँ npm install Axios ये library install करो फिर API call कैसे करते हैं so जैसे आपका package install हो जाता है तो अपने component में एक state create करो okay अब ये state में हम data store करने वाले so एक function create करो function को async रखो क्योंकि हमें जब तक API call का response नहीं आता, तब तक ये line पे हमें wait करना है। इसलिए मैंने async await का use किया। So axios dot gate और axios यहाँ पे अपने आप import हो जाएगा। अगर नहीं हुआ तो आपको import करना है, ठीक है? Axios dot gate अपना API call कौन सा है? Gate। 
गेट को क्या चाहिए यू आर एल सो यू आर एल हमने सेंड किया जो भी रिस्पॉन्स आएगा ए का अगर आपका ए का रिस्पॉन्स डायरेक्टली अरे है तो डायरेक्टली रिजल्ट डॉट डेटा लो बट अगर आपके ए के रिस्पॉन्स में और कुछ है वो ऑब्जेक्ट है और ऑब्जेक्ट में किसी प्रॉपर्टी में आपका डेटा है अरे है तो ऐसे कर सकते हो ठीक है सो ये नॉर्मल हमारा ए कॉल है गेट पोस्ट पुट डिलीट सो आगे के वीडियोज में हम वो भी कवर करेंगे इफ यू आर न्यू प्लीज डो लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब